Good morning, everybody. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning's session. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is a school, and it is not a church. And neither we affiliated with any church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of the eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity and to this present day. Now, this school is a result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kennedy in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And we have established schools throughout the United States, Canada, certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established in February 2021. Now in these schools, we use and teach by the true and original name of our Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet and would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is, is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart in his pure spirit state as a cloud. Now Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself. Because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, to God's shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this shape and form could only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, the self same spirit manifest himself into a physical body and walk the earth plain as Yahshua, the Messiah. The world calls him Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior 
during the time that he walked the earth plane. A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this book, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. Thereafter Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three components make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth to this school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of the streetfold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten aims of the school are as follows. One is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in the man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have a prayer by Dr. Ari Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is Romans. We're going to start off with the third chapter in the 24th verse and go right into the fourth chapter of Romans in the completed. Uh, we still don't have any music, but hopefully next week, I promise, we'll have music. Uh, here you go. Good day, class. Yeah, good day. We'd like to ask... Yahweh our Elohim to give us that understanding, that wisdom, that knowledge so we could see it in everything and we could see how it's all coming to pass which was given to us through Yahshua and we could ask him just to grant us that that spark again we all need that extra little lift once in a while and we ask this of you Yahshua, who ask you to give us that, that extra the knowledge and understanding of you and your Father, through you, in your name, we ask this, Yahshua, the Messiah, this all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I'll be reading out of the Schofield uh, Bible. Out of, uh, I got it up on my, my phone here. Okay, so uh, we'll start off at Romans, the third chapter, on the 24th verse. Okay, 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Yahshua the Messiah, whom Elohim has sent forth to be appropriation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Yahweh. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahshua. Where is boasting then? It is ex ex excluded by what the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he, the, is he the Elohim of the Jews only? Is he not the, also the Elohim of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one Elohim which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision, uncircumcision through faith. Do we then <clears throat> make law, uh, avoid the law through faith? Elohim forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Fourth chapter of uh, Romans. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the, law, to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has wherefore whereof the glory but not not before Elohim. For what saith the scriptures, Abraham believeth Elohim, and it was continued counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But it but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the unholy, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the, the blessedness of the, of the man unto whom Elohim imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the who Yahweh will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision only? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was then, how was it then reckoned when he said when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in uncircumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he receiveth the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all of them that believeth, that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. 
because the law worketh wrath. For where not the law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but that which that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is a father of all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even Elohim, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which are not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of all of, of many nations, according to which he spoken, so that they see be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, now dead when he was about a hundred and a hundred years old, neither yet and deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of Elohim through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to Elohim. And being the fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, was not, was it not written for the sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us able to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised from up Yahshua, our Savior, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised against again for our justification. I read uh, Romans 3rd and 4th chapters. As I'll say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alrighty. We have a, a speaker this morning, which would be Dr. Irene Ramirez. She asked that uh, she wanted to give a little lecture. No further doubt. Call her up. I do. Welcome to all that is listening to class this morning. Uh, I'd just start off with uh, saying that um, we have been, uh, Iggy and I, have been out of class for um, for a few years. And then when we came back, we had, um, we were instructed or told that, you know, if you stop by this class, I'm pretty sure you get something out of it. So we did. We started going to um, the class in Ontario with Joe Williams and Will Williams and Kenway Kleinsman and others that were there. And I remember, um, I don't know why, but when we stopped and started listening to the class, to me, to hear class again after you hadn't heard it for a while, back in the, you know, uh, we had come class in the early 2000s again, because we weren't up to class until the beginning of the 90s. We left class for a while, like I said. And we came back, the thing that got me again, and you know, it just, how should I say, it just warms the soul, um, is when they started reading the, uh, the Ames, and they started talking about Elohim, the archetype pattern of the universe. And it just was so uh, enlightening to hear that again. Excuse me. Because if you don't feed the soul, then you're not going to be able to know about that soul. That's what it is. 
is feeding the soul. And that's what we all need. We don't even need to hear about this or that school or whatever. We just need to learn about Yahshua so we can have the soul, which is him in us, being fed. So when I heard this, and Alvin and and talking about Moses, to me that was like a song, a song going over and over in, in your soul, and the singing going on. And if you keep on listening, you start seeing how your soul will be enlightened hearing about Yahshua's side. Because that's what he does. He raises up again in you. You know, he never left us, he's always been there. But we weren't open, our eyes weren't open to see that that was him the whole time. Now, it is him. And he has never left us, and he never will. We have to just keep our eye on Yahshua. Because if we take it off, he is... <laughs> we take it off, we're gonna, <laughs> things are going to happen. You know, even with him there, things are happening, but we are being able to tolerate this world and what the things we have to go through. You know, um, before you come into class, before you start learning about your Creator and the Son and who this true Savior is, you start thinking, thinking, why am I here? What am I doing here? Well, for me, for me here, I was just knowing something was wrong out there in the world. What I was learning about, it was wrong. Something was wrong. It wasn't enough. It wasn't fitting because, you know, I, I was raised, like I said, in Catholic Church. Um, others probably different, but I was raised in that, so I had to go learn the ten, the confirm. I had to go through the communion and then the confirmation, and then get married by church. You know, I did all those things that I was supposed to do, and yet well, my husband and I we returned to church for a little bit, regular church. Uh, we call it the Christian church. I don't know what it was. We Pentecostal. went Pentecostal. We went to it again, because um, you know, as your teenagers, you're trying different things. But after we got married, you know, uh, we went to it. We didn't return to the Catholic Church because I knew that was not right. So we went to the Christian Church, and something was still missing. And to me, my prayer was: I asked Yahweh, our Elohim. I'd asked, uh, you know, if everything, if people are telling us that there's good in all the religions, there's something good in all of them, you know, you just have to find which one you fit into. Well, we tried quite a few of them, and none of them fit, until we came in to learn about what the name of our Creator is, Yahweh our Elohim, the name of the Father, and we start learning the name of the Savior. Now, after we went through all that, we started saying, hi, something is, was missing. The true names, that was missing. And you find out who the Holy Spirit is, who your Savior is, Yahshua. Not Jesus. They, when you go to the church, they tell you how to act, how to be, how, who to worship. You know, you're supposed to worship, if you go to Catholic, uh, you're supposed to worship the Pope. If you go to regular church, you're supposed to worship your, um, whoever the speaker is, the leader is, whoever, the one that's giving the, how to be and how to act, and you know, you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. You know, we, we start listening to that. And something, like I said, it wasn't right until I come to start learning about the name of my Savior and His Father, the Creator of everything, Yahweh, heaven and earth. You start learning about that. I can tell you, it's like, it's like a song, like a beautiful song. Your soul gets, um, it starts resting for once. Like He has said in the scriptures, he says, Come unto me, all ye that are laying with heavy burdens. For my burdens are light. You know, learn of me. He says, All he says is come and learn of him. He's not telling you how to act. You know, for first time listeners, when you start learning about who the name of the Savior is, Yahshua, you know, do your investigation. Go into libraries or go into now as a phone. Check a Webster dictionary or the phone. And it says the names. It tells you that the letter J was not even even a part of the alphabet, when the, the Savior was walking the earth plane, doing all these laws that were set up back there with Moses. But when the Savior came in, he came in after that. But he was still under the law. And, you know, he was all doing it. And but one thing, a lot of things got me. My soul, 
you know, lifted and that, that, that knowing who your creator is and who is sensing. When you start learning, and he says, I said, of all the things, I'm not going to be worshiping now. I won't have to worship no man no more. He can't tell you how to worship the creator and his son. And he can't tell me that. I'm not going to do that no more. So, Yahshua, I said, okay then. Show me where to, how can I read? Because we didn't know how to read the Bible. I didn't know how to read it. So when I listened to him, that's when he started in telling us, can we get John 5 and 39? And start at, um, I think it's uh, 36. John 5 and 36. Okay. Now this is Joshua, he, and he's talking. This is your Savior. He's speaking at that time. To the, the Pharisees, and he's speaking to uh, the Jewish people. In John 5 and 36. But I have greater witness that of John. For the works which he, which the Father has given me to finish, mm -hmm. the same works I do bear witness of me. Go ahead. That the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which has sent me, then mm -hmm. bore witness of me. Go ahead. Yea. Ye neither heard his voice at any time, mm -hmm. nor seen his shape. And ye have not his words abiding in you. Right. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Okay. Now he's telling them, he says, you know, in my Holy Name Bible I'm reading, because it has the correct names in there. That's why I read the Holy Name Bible has the correct names, the Son and the Father, but Yahshua, he says, he tells them, ye search the scriptures, just like us at the time. We were searching the scriptures, we were trying to find how should we be, how can we worship the creator of heaven and earth? How can, we, how can things be right in each, uh, each church or each religion you go to? How can things be right in that? But Yahshua, he says, ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they, what do you say? And they are they which testify of me. Okay, now. And we come to this school, and we start learning about the names. Yahshua is instructing us. He's speaking, not us. He's speaking. He's telling you, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of him. Not you, and how you're supposed to act and stuff, but of him. So he tells them, keep going. Okay, 40. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not the honor of men, but I know that you, that ye have not the, the love of Elohim in you. Okay, stop right there. Now Yahshua, he's speaking to these people there, the Jewish and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And you know, they're listening to him saying, you know, this guy, he's over there talking, and he's telling us, search the scriptures. And he says, because he knows they don't understand him because they have not that love of him in him. Now when you start coming to these schools that are teaching the truth, you start learning, okay, now what was the love? What was he talking about? Yahshua, he explains to you. You're standing right there and he's talking. He, he knew. He knows. Because he is the Holy Spirit. And he hasn't parted out yet. And he's telling you, you have not the love of Elohim in you. You do not have the Holy Spirit in you. Yahshua, because I have not died on the cross. I have not poured out my spirit. I have not become your comforter yet. But I will. Go ahead, keep reading. Uh, verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another come in his own name, him ye will receive. Okay. Now, people of the world, listen. Now, if you're trying to be saved by this name, Jesus, and they have this last name, I guess, Christ. You're not going to be saved in this name. When he was born, Yahshua the Messiah, your Savior, his name was not Jesus. His name was Yahshua. He says right there, he, and he's telling you his words, I come in my father's name. His name of his father is Yahweh. It is not uh, God, Lord. Those are just titles. They're not names. And of all people you should give 
all thanks to, all honor to, should be to the Father of the heaven and earth, Yahweh Elohim. He, Joshua says, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. Now listen the whole world. You better start receiving what the true name is, because you won't have eternal life unless you have him, like I said, growing in you and teaching you. Go ahead, keep going. Verse 44. How can you believe which receiveth honor one from another, and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, whom ye had trust. For he, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Okay. Keep on. For he wrote of me. Okay, now. When you start coming to this class, and you start learning about your Savior, Yahshua, not Jesus, you start seeing, as he said, he points out, to these people he's, who he's talking to, that had you believed Moses, because Moses wrote of him. Now, he's giving you instructions right there. Where are you going to learn about him? Through Moses, he has him set up so he show, show us who he is. Not about what your preacher says. You know, if you do good and stuff like this, you're going to learn about your Savior. He could forgive you for your sins. No, that's not what Yahshua is saying. He said to learn of Him, and that's the way you're going to have eternal life. And that is my, what's been on my heart, to learn of Him. You know, whatever's going on in the world, just, just let it go. Let it be. Because we can't do anything about it. But Yahshua, through His Father, has everything under control. Mm -hmm. And He's the one that's going to take us through all this. He's the one that's going to, like I said, that... that quickening that we got when we first, well, and I got when I first came to class, that quickening that I had received through Yahshua, that is nothing compared to the world. Right. You know, nothing. And, and it just uplifts you that you know when he's, when the Bible's being read, you know how to read the Bible. He's showing you how to do it. He says, go back to Moses. There are so many things to get into, but all I want to just get across to you is just everybody just keep on learning. Don't worry about anything else. Just keep on learning of him. Because once you, he says, once you take, one of the scriptures says, once you take your eye off him, just as one of the disciples, when he, you know, there was a big old wind that came up in the ocean and stuff, and he wanted, he was wanted to go to where Yahshua was, and he was across there, and they seen, they had said they had seen him uh, a ways, walking on water. That's the Messiah, and his name is Yahshua. And he told the disciple, uh, the apostle, disciple go ahead come just look at me come, come Peter. Home. Peter and Peter went and he's crossing this this big old storm that's happening and this is the way I put it in my words big old storm is happening so he's he's walking towards him his eyes are on the Savior just like our eyes are supposed to be on him not anybody else nor anybody's problems just don't worry about it. let him take care of it he says he's a comforter just look at him now, I know it happens, we do the same thing that Peter does. He's walking across to see Joshua, but he's so worried about what's going around, what's happening around him, he sees him and he starts looking, he takes his eye off him, and what happens? He starts to sink. Just like with us, we take our eyes off him, we start to sink. But he says, so once he, he kept his eye on him, Joshua, he, he tells Joshua, you know, I'm drowning, I'm going to drown, or something's going to happen to him. Joshua just took him. Got him up, strained him up, and he was he was saved at that time. And same thing for us. We will be saved as long as we keep our eye on the mark of the high calling, who is Yahshua, through his father, Yahweh. And my it's just a short little testimony of what I felt that I had to get out for a moment. Because everybody's so worried about all kinds of things. Don't worry about it. He's gonna take care of it. He's taking care of us so far. Now, so far, he's got us through these days that we never thought we were going to live through at one time. You know, it's like impossible to even imagine what we have went through in this world. But you know what? I'm glad that Yahweh has chosen me so far to keep on learning him. That's what I like to get across to you. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Hallelujah.
Alrighty, before I call the next speaker, I just want to say something. When we read these chapters here in Romans, before I came to this teacher, teaching, I tried to read the Bible. I tried to understand. I couldn't make heads or tails. Now that I could read, been in this teaching for a little bit, I could read these chapters and understand what Paul was doing. He was contending with some of those Jews because the, the Gentiles were being brought in. And they were having problems with, well, we're Jews, we've been circumcised. Yeah, all you gotta do is just all you gotta do is just listen to what what Paul was going through. And Paul has to go back to Abraham, the law and the prophets, to explain these things and what it was going on after the day of Pentecost. You know? So, you know, I was listening to a, a, a an audio, okay? It's titled uh, Nixon. Uh, Quaker, Dr. Kelly, at the beginning of his lecture, tells him, in so many words, you got to go to the beginning to the end, to the end to the beginning, you know, in this teaching, you know, and he emphasizes on that. Now you got to ask yourselves, is, is that what we're doing? You want to talk about the founder of this teaching, and he's telling you how to go through this teaching. Okay? And you have to be wary about that. Because I listen to a lot of classes online, although I don't punch in and everything, but I listen to what's going on and I say, are they following the rules the founder set up? He's the one that had this vision. He's the one that's, this, uh, uh, how does he say it? It's a new revolutionary way of seeing or understanding Yahweh Elohim. We had a lot of prophets all the time, but the way it's set up, according to this teaching, now we can understand. Okay. So, I don't want to get to the big thing, but I'll call the next speaker. He'll be the director and CEO of Archetype Pattern Workshop, Dr. Will Williams. Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. And um, I appreciate the previous uh, two speakers, the two testimonies. It was, that's, that, was, uh, that was said. And just to reiterate the purpose of this organization, Archetype Pattern Workshop, <clears throat> we are dedicated to expounding upon the doctrine of one Henry Clifford Kelly as it was given to him by Yahweh our Elohim right. via these charts. He wrote a textbook, numerous lectures that were transcribed, you know, audio recordings and such, so that there would be no mistake about what it was that he taught. Okay. And so we strive here, at the very least, to explore those things that Dr. Kinley brought up after he received this profound, stupendous vision and revelation. Um, what I would like to do is maybe do a little bit of a continuance of what, what we did in our previous session. Mm -hmm. You know, this time I have my bigger periodic table and all these charts that we can go deal with. And, um, and this subject is really a very important one in this respect. It is the heart of our doctor, so to speak. Dr. Kinley, <clears throat> the fact that we even call Henry Clifford Kinley a doctor. Right. All right, there's a reason for that, okay? This university is one of these uh, historical black colleges and universities in Tennessee. And uh, what Dr. Kinley did See, Dr. Gross, Dr. Carl Gross, had an affiliation with various 
black colleges. In fact, Dr. Gross even knew one famous black scientist. You know, that was uh, George Washington Carver. He had a hmm. he had an acquaintance with him. Well, okay, George. That, that if you don't know who he is, he's the one that came up with three hundred uh, varieties or variations of what you could do with a peanut. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So Dr. Gross, I think, made an arrangement for Dr. Kimmick to speak to present himself at this university where he explained the, uh, the 92nd Adam that he wrote in his textbook. Okay, that is to say, the relationship of the hydrogen atom right. in its relationship to Elohim and how that counted against the prevailing thought of the time, which he termed science of mind, that is to say, the pantheistic view of of religion saying that, well, you can think it, you can achieve it, not understanding or realizing that it is the spirit law of the universe that is truly operating everything. Who is Elohim? Okay. And, uh, and Dr. Kelly gave an oral dissertation at, you know, in front of the faculty of Fisk University, and they were so impressed with what he had to say that they gave him mm -hmm. a PhD doctorate in honor. In 2001, when um, they had the, uh, the International Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. Kinaway and I, we tried to, we went over to Fisk University while we were there. We were at the convention, and it was in this dome. It was like a city within a city in this dome. And uh, while we were there, Kinaway and I went to Fisk University to inquire about the PhD that they gave Dr. Kim. And we talked to a guy, and we, matter of fact, we met the dean of students there. His name was Dr. George Kelly, if I remember his name right, yeah. Dr. George Kelly. And he said he would do a search and he would get back to me. And he did after a few days, because we were still in Nashville at the convention. And he told me, he said that, the, he said they couldn't find it, and he said the, the reason that he thought, the reason why they couldn't find it was because of, of that time, uh, it was in a building that got flooded over, and all the documents that were in that building got got destroyed, and that may have been one of the documents. And so, mm -hmm. so that's the reason why they said they couldn't find it. You know, okay. But I had talked to him. You know, we talked to him. We told him who we were at the time. We were in the IDMR as a convention down here, you know, in Nashville, and all of this. And I explained it all to him, and he, and he did what he could to try to find it, but he couldn't. Okay. But that's how Dr. Kinley got a PhD. Mm -hmm. That's why we call it Dr. Kinley. Okay. So, in understanding that, I want to go back to. Let's see. Do we have our plates? We not. I need some plates. Yeah. I need the uh, cos. I want the Theosophy, cos Theosophy, Godhead, and Cosmogony. Just those three. Those three plates. <clears throat> and see. What Dr. Kinley did and talked about, you know, I, I, to what the previous uh, wrestler was saying about certain things, uh, I think a lot of people don't get into it enough. There are a couple of folks out there that will skirt on into the subject, right? A bit, but not really get into it in this full detail as Dr. Kinley did, right? Which is really the heart of what we believe in. That people say, "Well, I thought it was Yahshua Messiah." Well, Guess what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pattern of the universe is Yahshua mm -hmm. Messiah. When you study the pattern, you are studying Yahshua. If you learn something from the pattern, you are truly learning it from the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay? See, this is not just some kind of you know exercise that we're doing to make us, you know, because some people think, oh, what you're doing is how you run the charts and all this kind of how you smart you look and look, let me tell you something. I wouldn't know a damn thing if I didn't you know, if I didn't run the charts. I run the charts so I can learn something. Mm -hmm. Because prior to me running the charts, I don't know anything. So you want cosmogony? Yeah, I want cosmogony. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. And what we have yeah, theosophy and uh, the and the god. Yes, yes. How about that? It will stay on the clip. Okay. You can lower it and clap it and then raise it back up. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. 
Now, let's go into something basic here. As was always brought out in the moderation, Yahweh is spirit. Right. He is spirit. He's abstract, all right? Dr. Kimmick had a statement that really describes it best. The human mind cannot conceive what it cannot perceive. Since you cannot perceive of this pure spirit state of existence, then you know you can't conceive anything about it. Right. Nothing. Not one iota of what's going on here. Thus, it behooves this pure spirit state of existence, which is Yahweh, to transmute in part, not in totality, into a state of perceivability. Now, over here. That's right here. All right? This is him coming through the veils of inscrutability and incomprehensibility. Right. All right? This is the first Passover. This is a death. Right. All right? This is also the 92nd atom. Right. Okay. All right. This is, this is the beginning. When, when Yahweh took on shape and form here, Yahweh, pure spirit, went into his rest, and it was the Son mm -hmm. that fulfilled the work, the will of the Father by performing the creation. This is the creation right here in itself. Okay. And this is a death. All right. Now, this shape and form is the same as this heart. Now, come back over here. We have the same heart right here on the cloud. The pure spirit, you know, with these bolts here and the, and the mouth speaking for him, right? That Yahweh in pure spirit is the law of the spirit, right. in, even in a pure spirit state. But we can't perceive of it in right. this state, so he had to move into a state of perceivability. Oh, now we can see. Mm -hmm. See, we can see what's happening now. Because this is going to declare the invisible Father to us, right. but but this is, but that's what Yahweh is. Even in pure spirit, he's the, he's a law of the spirit. Mm -hmm. We just can't perceive it that way. Because he see, look, he's the all in all. Everything is here, but you just can't perceive anything of it until the Son comes out to declare the invisible Father to us. Now down here, we have the earth sticking in and out of the water. Okay. Well, maybe, let me, let me, let me, before I'm getting ahead of myself, because uh, I want to say this. Heart here, heart here, theosophy, right? And if you can see here, all these attributes here have hearts here. And we have the kingdom here, see, showing forth that these nine attributes are embedded in the tenth attribute, which is the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should read that since we have it here, Matthew 25, 34. Let me just read that right quick. Just to let you know what this now this is the cloud. This is pure spirit now. Right. I'm trying to, I'm showing you. But the the reason why I know this because he's declared it unto us, but I'm showing you, showing you what this is. Okay, what's happening? Do we Okay, Matthew 25 and 34, you said? Yes. Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand. Come ye blessed of my Father. Mm -hmm. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. From the foundation of the world. Here, alright? So now here, this is the same kingdom here. You know what? Don't use the mic. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is the kingdom here. Alright? This is a Passover because this is coming into shape or form constitutes a death. Right. All right. So now I'm saying this, this shape and form here and this heart are synonymous. They're both one and the same. Therefore, when I come here to this next plate and I see this heart here, this is Elohim. Spirit law. This right. is Elohim. And so now he's got to come through the, well, actually he's got to create mm -hmm. the angelic creation. See, because here we got the division between spirit and matter. And we got angels here on the veil. This is the angelic creation right here. Mm -hmm. All right? So now here's Elohim coming through the veil. Now when you come through the veils, there has to be a transition. Right. All right? So now here he is. Here's spirit law transitioning in part, not in totality, into 
the first hydrogen atom. Okay? Then this hydrogen atom is going into, it's, it's just simply told a, a simple command. Be fruitful and multiply. Right. One becomes two, two becomes four. Molecules are four. And then we have the gaseous form, the atmospheric heaven. Because see, these are the three heavens. This is eternity. This is the second heaven, the atmospheric heaven. And now we're here in the first heaven where these molecules have conglomerate, you know, gated together, or as Dr. Kinley likes to call it, an amalgamated conglomeration of a coring mass, this inorganic earth. And this mass has everything. Right. But it's chaotic. That's why I was over here, pointing that over here. Here's the earth here, pointing, sticking in and out of the water. And look, everything here is here. The gold, the silver, even the man is here. But because it's in a chaotic state, you cannot recognize anything about it. Why? Because it is a representation of the cloud up here. Just like here, you have a pure spirit state, but you can't recognize anything about it. You can't recognize these attributes. Right. You wouldn't know anything about these attributes were it not for the fact that he came into shape and form in part, not in totality, talking about Elohim, and told you about them. See? That's the only reason why we know what's happening here, because it's the sun who's declaring the invisible father unto us, okay? Now, going back to the hydrogen atom thing, just to show this part. Exodus 20, 24, 9 and 10. Exodus 24, 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, mm -hmm. and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone, mm -hmm. and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Mm -hmm. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw Elohim, and did eat and drink. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give these tables of stone, and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Okay, that's good enough. Um, normally, I would not answer this phone, <laughs> but this is from a guy, this is one of my students, who, who's in a federal prison. You may begin speaking now. Hello. Hey, I was just about to hang up the phone. No, see, I, we're having class right now, and I'm on the floor, but you can listen to 10 minutes of it if you want. <laughs> yeah, I would like it, I would like it. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm gonna put the phone down, put it by a speaker, and see. This, uh, this is. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, so, me? Yeah, yeah, you and everybody, dude. You're alive, man. You're on YouTube, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> hey, how you doing, y'all? Yeah. Hey, how y'all doing? I don't know what to say. Just go ahead. What's your name? How about telling them your name? Oh, I'm Ernest Phillips. Okay. You know, You know I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna show up. All right, uh, I, I'm gonna put the phone down. I'm gonna let you just listen to uh, to to the class that's going on right now. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's that's uh that's that's my good friend Ernest. Man. He's, yeah. All right. <clears throat> now what we're talking about? We just read the scripture where Elohim here. Right. He's standing on the pave working for sapphire stone. All right. Now that sapphire stone is the earth. Okay. Uh, to, to verify that, let's get. Um, Isaiah 66 and 1. Yeah. If you feel like reading, Ernest, you can go ahead and read it. <laughs> Isaiah 66 and 1. Uh -huh. Thus saith Yahweh, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Now heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Okay, so now we're showing you that he himself is the 92nd atom. Right. See, here in this, in this case, look, we tell you all the time about atoms, all right? An atom is a proton. Let me get you over here. 
An atom is a proton, a neutron, and an electron. Right? Three different parts, but one atom. But that only accounts for 91 elements. There are 92 elements altogether, but right. 91 of them have this proton, neutron, and electron. But the hydrogen atom is different. It only has a proton and an electron. And someone will say, ah, well, see, something's wrong here. See, it doesn't, doesn't fit that. Ah, but see, the thing we, we're, we're trying to show you is, is that the proton and the electron are immersed in the invisible third part, right. which is spirit. Probably the best explanation would be this ages and dispensations chart. When you can look at it, see, you see the angelic creation, that would be like the proton. The physical creation would be like the electron. We're talking about the hydrogen atom. Mm -hmm. Both of them are embedded in the cloud symbolizing eternity or in that invisible third part. Right. See, that's spirit law. Okay? So now here on plate four, which is cosmogony, see, here we got this matter of fact, let's get Second uh, Corinthians 12 and 1. See, we want to get these, these about these heavens in here. See. Okay, yeah. Get uh Second Corinthians. Uh huh. Twelve and one. Second Corinthians twelve and one. Uh huh. It is not expedient for me to be doubtless to glory. I come to visions and revelations of Yahweh. I knew a man in the Messiah more than fourteen years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. Yahweh knoweth. Mm -hmm. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. <laughs> Now, such a one caught up to the third heaven. We have it right here on this plate, cosmogony, the third heaven. That is eternity. Then we have it in the holy place, which is the second heaven, which is the atmospheric heaven. Right. And then we have here on the veils, dividing the first and second heaven. Here's the first heaven here, which is space. Earth hangs like a ball in space. Right. So this is the, the three heavens, okay? The first two heavens emanate from the third. Mm-hmm. See, that's the point I'm trying to make here. And that and Elohim is the original 92nd atom of which the hydrogen atom is created in the image and likeness thereof. Even with the atom, we talk about like the physical body here. You have this physical body. You have anatomy and physiology. You have structure and you have function. The same way with the atom. In the atom, you have a proton, a, a neutron, and an electron, but you also have forces. You have gravitational forces. Right. You have electromagnetic right. forces. You have nuclear forces, right. which are divided up as strong and weak. See, they, they would be like the high priest operating in the tabernacle, just like you have this tabernacle here. You have a priest that operates in it that goes between the vessels, just like you have proton, neutron, electron, and those forces go between the particles, okay? Now, if that be the case, see, and we see that Elohim is the original 92nd Adam, and he's at the beginning of all things, then you'll have to see him appearing at the end right. of all things, okay? And, uh, and this is and this is what we're trying to get into. We want that's why I, I brought my uh, periodic table of elements here. I wanted to go through this, not so much to show you know. I, I want to go through this so that people can learn and do this yourself, mm -hmm. so that I won't have to be the only one. But the difference is, the only thing you have to know is know the steps of the pattern. See, just know the steps of the pattern. See, the steps of the pattern is what will explain everything about whatever science or endeavor that you happen to get in. Because it's the pattern that is the originator of all things. Okay? Just, uh, just quickly. See, we have <clears throat> this tabernacle pattern. We have the migratory pattern. The migratory pattern represents the greater and more perfect sanctuary, which is the universe. How so? As we said, you have three heavens. So you got eternity. You have atmosphere, you have space. See, uh, let's look on, over here on the Moses chart. Here you got space. It's black down here in the court in Egypt. It's black, just like space is black. Then you got the wilderness of Sinai. So you got the atmospheric heaven. Then you got Canaan's land, which is the third heaven or eternity, of which the first two heavens emanate from. Okay, now, or you could say this. 
physical creation, court round of Egypt, angelic creation, wilderness of Sinai, holy place, eternity, right. Canaan's land. Both the angel the physical and the angelic creation emanate from eternity mm -hmm. or from Yahweh. Okay? Now Um, let's see how, 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 how I want to do this. Um, hydrogen. I, did, I, 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 I put this up last week, but I'll put it up again. I'll put it up again. Hydrogen has the ability to split into two parts. Right. See hydrogen? See, hyd see look, hydrogen... Uh, See, hydrogen has one proton and one electron. All right? And I did this the last time. I'll do it again. See, when you look at these particles, this would be a proton, and then you got a neutron, you know, which is just as big as a proton, but it doesn't have a charge. See? But it has mass and it has weight. And then you got this little dot here, which is the electron. But it has a, you know, it's not as big as these behemoths, right. but it makes up for it with a strong negative charge. All right. So now here's hydrogen. It's got one proton, one, one electron. Now it could go into what's called an isotope. And the isotope of hydrogen, one of them is deuterium. Deuterium, it has one proton and one neutron. Now that in itself should tell you it's heavier than this because look at the scale. Right. See? See? So this is heavier than this. And see, with hydrogen, you can combine it with oxygen and make H2O. Mm -hmm. Deuterium, you can combine it with oxygen and make D2O, or which is called heavy water. And it's poisonous, actually. But if, but if you was to fall into a vat of heavy water, you wouldn't be able to move because the viscosity is so thick. Then it can go down into another isotope, which is tritium. All right, tritium is one proton and two neutrons, meaning it's this is heavier than this. Wow, and okay. this see and this has the ability to glow in the dark. It's radioactive. Talking about tritium. Alright, now when you look at that according to the pattern, with see Yahweh, pure spirit, see that would be like hydrogen. And and hydrogen is an odorless, tasteless, colorless gas, but highly flammable. Why? You can't see Yahweh, can't feel Yahweh, can't touch him, but he's a consuming fire. Right. Then you have deuterium here. See, you take now, you know, this is the first isotope after hydrogen, see. And John said himself when he heard the voice of Yahweh, he would sound like the sound of many waters, okay? Heavy waters. Mm -hmm. And then you have the third part, then you have tritium here, which is Yahshua Messiah in the flesh here. And then you have him the, glowing in the dark because he said he was the light of the world, okay? All right. Okay. I don't know how much time but we got. About a few minutes left. How you doing over there? About three. About three. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. You know, let me listen to the class, man. It was beautiful. Well, I'm just glad, man. I'm just glad to hear from you, man. Glad to hear. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. I'm sorry, interrupting. That's <laughs> all right. It's all right. All right, man. You know, thank you. Sorry. Thank you, everybody. All right. All right. Bye -bye. All right, they, they all heard you. Appreciate all you right. calling, man. Listen, man. Right. Right, Peace and love in Yahshua. Take care. All right. That's my friend, Ernest Phillips. He started, he, I've been corresponding with him for several months. and He started a class in Pennsylvania, and now they're transferring him to another place, facility. You know, so hopefully we'll hear from some more. Mm -hmm. And he's very zealous about the, about the gospel. Okay, where am I? All right. So now... This is two manifestations, talking about hydrogen, two manifestations of the one element. Right. Why? Because what you have here is two manifestations of the one spirit. Okay? Now, we want to get into, what did I do with, uh, here we are. I want to get into this a little bit. It's for the later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let me show you. Just see this key away. I know. All right. I have here a periodic table of elements. Uh, 
This is a period. This was uh, was first developed by a Russian scientist. His name was Dmitry Mendeleev. Uh, well, actually, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev. Yes, he's a, he was a Russian scientist in the 19th century, and he came up with this by a dream. He saw this in a dream. Hmm. And see, and, and a lot of times people don't understand that Yahweh, you know, he, when it comes to inventions and so-called discoveries, he, he's no respecter of persons. Like right. That, you know, and like, uh, I, I think this is a scripture, John 3.27. John 3 and 27. Mm -hmm. John answered and said, A man cannot can receive nothing except it be given from him from heaven. Okay, see, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. In other words, it's Yahweh who's doing the inspiration for these inventions right. and, and discoveries and so forth and so on. And, and he allows them to, you know, call it something else. I mean... You know, we would say the law of gravity, but really it's the law of Yahweh. But we will say Newton's law of gravity or Newton's law of motion because Isaac Newton was the one that Yahweh revealed him mm -hmm. to and allowed him to, you know, write out the ramifications and parameters of the laws of motion and stuff. Okay. Likewise, here we have uh, these parameters here for the. Uh, Periodic table of elements. And see, and the reason why it's called periodic, something that is periodic is something that repeats itself at an interval. These lines here represents periods across. And there are seven periods. Okay, one, let's see, one, two, three, four, let's see, yeah, five, six, seven. I didn't count this because, see, this, this column goes up here which is this, this line would be right here, and this line would be right here. Mm -hmm. so, when you, so when you count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. S seven periods or seven lines, okay? And we'll get into that a little bit more. All right, and that's what's called a period because a periodic table. And, there, and this is a color-coded thing to show you that the elements that are under the same colors are elements that are related to each other, okay? With the exception of hydrogen. Here's hydrogen, which is clear. But hydrogen is the father right. of all of these elements. And let me say something about hydrogen right quick, I think, since I'm, I'm up here. And I got, it, got it, I got it right here. Here's hydrogen, if you zoom in on here. Here it tells you the number the atomic number, and it also gives you this number here at the bottom. That's called the atomic weight hmm. of hydrogen. And the atomic weight of hydrogen is 1.00794. Now, here's something interesting. Here, <clears throat> 1,000, Four. This is the atomic weight for hydrogen. I'm sure there's some mathematicians out there in the audience. If you were to round, take this number and round it off to the nearest decimal, that number would be 1008. That's for one molecule? For, yeah, for that one, for that, for that element, for, the, for the, uh, the proton and the electron. Okay. This is the atomic weight of it, all right? And it would be, and if you take that and round it off to 1.008, that's the number, well, that's the rounded off number for this. Guess what? 1.008 Park Avenue. Yeah. That's the address where Dr. Kinley received the vision. Yeah. His address, doc, the, the vision. 1008 Park Avenue is, is the address where Dr. Kinney received the vision, which also happens to be the same weight as a hydrogen, as the hydrogen element. In 1931. See, just thought I'd bring that mm -hmm. up. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. Now, here, and we have, like I said, this is color-coded. All right. This is uh, alkaline metals, which is what this is here. That just simply means these metals are very reactive. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, 
cesium, and francium. See, I know about this one. I've seen this. Potassium. You can take a pinch of potassium and drop it in a glass of water and you'll get a nice little yeah, firework sure. going. Because it's that reactive. Mm -hmm. See, these are reactive elements. All right? You know, cesium, I know cesium, they use that for underwater flares. I mean, that's how reactive it is against water. It'll burn underwater, literally. Mm -hmm. All right? So now, this would, now here's, this would be like unto the altar of sin and sacrifice. Let me move this over. Where I can get, get to it. All right. Now, this would, this, this would be like the altar of sin and sacrifice here. All right. Because there's a continual burning here. Right. All right. It's a continual burning. Okay, and then we're going over here, and then we're coming over here, and then we're coming to this little area here. See, this little, it's showing you that these, these, this row of elements are drawn out for clarification from, this, from this, these rows up here. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step we come to here is this element. This is called lanthium. All right, now the etymology of the word lanthium means that it is hidden. Mm -hmm. Something that's hidden, all right? See, or not in view. Why? That would be like the brazen labor, see, which is a type of a burial, okay? Maybe I should get on this side. Let me straighten out that thing. Chart for you. Okay. Can I come in here for a minute? Sure. Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't want to go down on you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get me on the floor again. Okay. I'm too old okay. to do the limbo. <laughs> okay. It'd be oh. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, lathium, all right, means hidden, all right, see, or immersed, you know. Mm. That would be like the brazen labor, because that's a type of a burial, okay. And then, and see, and this, and this element here, begins this L, this row here. This row here is, is called the Lanthanide series. Mm -hmm. this, this row here, okay? Now, here, this is an element is called actinium. Actinium means light. Mm -hmm. So now you got the light shining out of darkness. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Come over here to the migratory pattern. What happened over here? See, they followed this phenomenal cloud. Right. It was light to them, but darkness to the Israelites. That's why we have this half circle here. Egyptians. Of light, and it was dark to the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. See, all right? But we got the light shining out of the dark, out of that darkness, mm -hmm. okay? That's what's pointing, at, pointing out over here. And that takes you into the holy place. Now, here, from here, we have to go up here. These are called transition metals, all right? Let's be like into the holy place up here, all right? And see now in the holy place, let's look at let's look at the pattern. Let's look at the pattern right here. What's in the holy place? Mm -hmm. See, we have light, right, bread, and intercessor. So now look here on the on this and look for the principles of light. Here, number seventy four. This is W. This is the chemical sim symbol for tungsten. Now, if you know anything about tungsten. Tungsten is a filament right. for light bulbs. Right. Okay. See, that's 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 our principle for light. See, for light bulbs. Okay, that's the light. Now we got uh, this element here, number twenty-six, Fe, ferron, ferrous, or iron. See, that would be likened to the table of shoe bread. How so? Because see, from a physical standpoint, you have to have iron in your blood. Right. See, or else you're feeling all run down. Iron blood. Poor blood. See, that's your daily. You have to have so much iron in your blood. That's your daily sustenance. Mm -hmm. That would be like the table of shoe bread. Right. Okay. And then over here, this little area, this color, we got number thirty, which is zinc. I know zinc. Is good for your lungs, like when you're congested and things like that. Right. You, you take zinc for your lungs, and that would be like the two. Your lungs is like the two, the altar of incense. Right. All right. The intercessor. Okay. Now we come over here to the pattern. We got. We're, we're going up to the sixth step, which is the second departmental veil, of blue, purple, and scarlet. 
So now here we come to this green area here to look for the principles of blue, purple, and scarlet. Here we got carbon, which is the sixth element. See, carbon, you know, we are carbon-based life forms. Right. All life is based on carbon, the sixth, which is element number six, okay? We breathe nitrogen and oxygen, which is in the atmosphere, okay? And see, and, 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 when the, and on a nice clear day when the sun is shining, what color is the sky? Blue. It's blue, okay? Down here, we have iodine. Iodine is, a, is also is an element, but it's also a chemical secreted by your thyroid gland. And the word iodine means purple, mm -hmm. okay? Here we have BR number 35, which is bromine. Bromine is an element that is reddish in color. So now in this green area, we see the principles of blue, purple, and scarlet. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now after that, we come into the most holy place where we see the Ark of the Covenant. See, the two archangels and a cloud sitting on the mercy seat. Okay? Here, we have this blue area. This, this, these are called noble elements. The reason why they're called noble elements is because they are inert. Right. And, the, and, the, and that simply means this. They don't react with anything. Mm -hmm. You can't mix helium with something else and get something. You, they just, they don't. They just don't react with anything. So they're inert. They're, they're noble. They're, they're aloof, if you will. Okay? And so these noble gases, all right? Now, there is an exception to that rule. Neon will react with something. Talking about neon gas. Mm -hmm. It will react with electricity. Right. Electricity will make neon gas to glow. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, this is like the most holy place. So what happens in the most holy place here? When the high priest went up here on the Day of Atonement and did his, you know, his, his offering of blood, he would have to see the flash of the Shekinah. Mm -hmm. See, that light, that illumination. That's reflected here with these noble gases, with neon, okay? Now, <clears throat> if you notice here, we told you earlier that these lines represent periods. Right. When you come to the end of a period, see, you have to start over and create a new period. With the exception of helium, the end of the periods here all end with eight, eight electrons in their shell or outer orbit. See, if you see here, you see the number eight here, Number eight here, number eight here, number eight here, and number eight here. This is called, and I'll write it up here. This is called the octet rule. This is called the octet rule. And uh, if I can get something here, oh, there it is. Maybe I can look this up for you, and, uh, and I'll <clears throat> and I'll read this. Did we say those noble glass uh, gases are neutral. They're, they're noble. Well, they're, they're they don't react, right? I mean, I don't know if you call it neutral. They just they just don't react with other gas, with other elements. The octet rule. Octet rule definition. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> I'll give you the short version. The octet rule refers to the tendency of atoms to prefer to have eight electrons in their valence shell. That's the outer shell, okay? When atoms have fewer than eight electrons, they tend to react and form more stable compounds, okay? All right, but it's just, but that's the octet rule. But see, in here, because this, these elements end with eight, they got to start a new period, which is symbolizing a new beginning. Okay, that's what the eight symbolizes, eight a new beginning. beginning. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, that's Elohim. And look, this is Elohim transmuting, see, into the hydrogen atom. And then these atoms forming an 
forming the other elements. I took an astronomy class once, and I remember, and I remember they, them telling me this about the universe at large. When you talk about the uh, the, the galaxies and the comets and, and everything else about the elements in space, they said that ninety. This is what they told me. They said ninety percent of the universe was made of, a, of hydrogen. Nine percent of the universe was made up of helium, and the other one percent is everything else. Hmm. So that should tell you that 99% of the universe is a gas right. or a cloud. And in the midst of this cloud, you have a solar system that has nine planets, which is like it to the nine systems of the body. In the midst of that cloud, right. in the midst, you understand? Mm -hmm. See, to let you know that there is a purpose underway. There is a plan. There is a divine pattern right. in operation. Okay? Now... Now, since I talked about cosmogony, it would only be fair that I kind of touch on eschatology, mm -hmm. or the end. So I need 38, 39, and 40. See, because this is how the universe began. Right. It began by Elohim taking on shape and form, or transmuting it to this super incorporating, you know, this, this heavenly anthropomorphic being. Okay? And this is the original hydrogen atom. Okay? You know, I, I lowered that chart there. She'll be able to... Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see if I can all get, right. get them all on here. That would be nice because that would be a good... Uh, oh, okay. Migratory pattern, how it's the greater and more perfect sanctuary, which is the universe. Okay, he does all of this so that you would get to the point that okay, once that these steps, these seven steps of the tabernacle pattern, are drilled into your head, the gate, the altar of sin sacrifice, brazen labor, cup of holy anointing oil at the door, the holy place with the light, bread, intercessor. Second departmental veil, blue, purple, scarlet. Six step, seven step, Ark of the Covenant, two archangels on top of a mercy seat. And the clouds sitting on top. Understanding these seven steps and the corresponding seven steps mm. in the migratory pattern is what is what you need to know as your beginning primer to go through these charts. Once you start comparing the plates with the pattern and or the migratory pattern, then you'll get to a point where you'll be able to see, or hopefully you should see, that these are the same principles that are inherent in all the plates. To the point that now you can make combinations of different plates to make doctrinal points. All right? Correlations. See? By correlations, that's how you make your doctrinal points through the correlations. Here, this is my this is the doctrinal point. The end 
right. declared from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now that's the simple and top simple point as I can make. Right. And see, and by putting this together, we can see here's here's the beginning. El him taking on shape and form. Here's cosmogony, which right. means the beginning of the universe. Here's eschatology, which is telling you the end right. of the universe. And at the beginning, look, the end is declared from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if it's like this here, where it's coming from Elohim, and it's coming because he is the creation, then it's got to be a situation where you got to see all of this going back into Elohim. Right. And then him coming back out again, as he did in the beginning. See? By death. And, you know, yeah. If this is a death here. This is a death here. Mm. See, it's the same thing. Okay? Now, let's get First Corinth, uh, First Thessalonians. I think it's First Thessalonians, the uh, fourth chapter, four and thirteen, maybe. Four and thirteen. Uh-huh. First Thessalonians four and thirteen. Mm-hmm. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, mm -hmm. concerning them which are asleep, mm -hmm. that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Mm -hmm. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, even so then, so them also which sleep in Yahshua mm -hmm. will bring, will, will he bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh, mm -hmm. that we which are alive and remain until the coming of our Savior, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Mm -hmm. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Okay, now he says he's going to descend from heaven with a shout. First of all, what heaven are we talking right, about? Right, right, right. Are we talking about space, nope. which is the first heaven? Are we talking about uh, the atmospheric heaven, nope. which is the second heaven? Or are we talking about the third heaven? Third heaven. See, and look. I got this plate here. This is the angelic transgression plate. Here, see, see here. They're you know they're invisible. Mm -hmm. You know they're a veil. Talking about right here. Got the got it here. Angelic invisibility. Draw a line. Here's Yahshua. That's where he's at. He's in angelic invisibility. What do you mean? He's incarnated in those who know. Right. See, Yahshua is not coming from the sun, moon, and star. He's already here because the scripture says that you have to. Uh, that Yahshua is manifested in the flesh. Now, where's that at? In those who know mm -hmm. and believe. See, so when he says he's going to come from heaven, what heaven is he coming <laughs> In here. Mm -hmm. This is where he's dwelling in, in those who know. See, and he's got to come through a veil. He's right. got to see coming through the veil from angelic invisibility into a state of incorporeal visibility. It's the same way here. He's, Yahshua is revealed from heaven. How? Coming through the veil into a state of incorporeal visibility. That means this. It's a universal revelation. Right. So that means the universe will see him. Well, what is the universe? The universe is only two parts. Right. There's an angelic creation. There's a physical creation. So if he is universally revealed, that means all angels will see him, all demons will see him, and all souls right. will see him here. Okay? In a state of incorporeal visibility. Okay? Keep reading. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of Yahweh, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Mm -hmm. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet Yahshua in the air. To be caught up in the cloud. What the, what the, the physical clouds? Nope. Not the physical cloud. We already told you what the cloud right. really was. I mean, at the time. Is yeah, and caught up in the air. What air? Are we talking about the atmosphere's air? No. no. Remember what we said? We said heaven was right. first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. Space, atmosphere, eternity. Okay. Body, soul, spirit. Paul is speaking spiritually. He said we're going to be caught up in the air. We're going to be caught up in our souls. Right. We're not going to be caught up, you know, like, because that's the rapture. That's what people believe, the mm -hmm. rapture. Like, we're going to be physically, first, the error is, you're going to be physically resurrected. That's an error. 
And then two, you're gonna like your physical body's gonna be floating up toward yeah. wherever yeah. Jesus Christ is appearing at or wherever. Yeah. And you know, like can you imagine billions of people cloud. doing that floating up? You'd be bumping into somebody, oh, yeah. you know, hey man, stay in your lane over there, man, you know. That kind of thing. Yeah. It's no, it's not happening like that. Mm -hmm. See, see, everything is a universal revelation here, angelic visibility. All right. Keep reading. And so shall we ever be with him. Uh huh. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right. See, now that right there shows you that eschatology, which is the end of all. This is a descending plate. Right. Okay. This is a descending plate. Uh, get. Um, Acts 17.24. Want to speak up? Acts 17 and 24. Mm -hmm. Yahweh who made the world mm -hmm. and all things were in, mm -hmm. seeing that he is a ruler of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. he dwelleth not in temples made with hands, mm -hmm. neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath. And all things, and had made of one man mm -hmm. all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. Now, made of one man. See, what one man is that? That man is Adam. Mm -hmm. See, he made of one man, Adam, to dwell on all, all the nations of the earth. And look, that's just like over here. We were talking to you about this periodic table of elements. Look, see, this is color coded. These, these color codings show you the families of elements. See, this is a family of transition metals, they're all related to each other. See, this green area is a, is a non-metals, but they're all related to each other. Mm -hmm. Same like with, with families of the earth, you know. We've got black people, white people, yellow people, red people. We've got different nations, you know, Americans, Russians, mm -hmm. Africans, you know. Uh, all, it's just like, you know, and they have the, it's just like these elements have their different properties. So do all these different nations. See, Yahweh gave the gifts and talents, you know, among everybody. He didn't slight no one, Right. you know. You know, there's certain, you know, and, and, and you can even break it down to your own family. You know, your family may have different traits and, and talents and gifts and stuff that makes your family distinctive from other families, you know. Maybe your family might be exceptionally short or exceptionally tall. Or maybe you may have a, your family may have a gift of music. I knew a family like that back in my hometown. Luther Ingram, he was a singer. He was a singer. You know, what's that song? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I do his, I went to school with his family. Uh. You know, the whole Ingram family and their clan, they're very musically talented. They can, they can either sing or play an instrument or dance or something. You know, they're just, that That was just their their train. You know, somebody, you know, at churches, they say, oh, well, the Ingram family's going to say, oh, really? Oh, sure, no, we're going to have a... We're gonna have a good show, you know. But I'm just saying, you know, there are people like this. Some, some, some folks are very athletic, you know, mm -hmm. boxers and stuff, or maybe in mechanics. I knew a family like that. Three generations of people that were good with mechanics could take a car apart and put it back together within a day. You know, I mean, they just had that kind of talent, you know, that kind of thing. See, and the elements it reflect. It has to be reflective of that, because see, these elements here, these are inorganic. But man, who was created from the dust of the earth. Man has these same elements within him. It's just organized now. Okay? But keep reading. And has determined the times before appointed. Uh -huh. And the bounds of their habitations. Just like this periodic table. See with the elements, the bounds of their habitations. Okay, it's the same way here. Go ahead. That they should seek him. Mm -hmm. If happily they might feel after if him. If happily they might feel after him. You know? And find him. That's fine. You see, just that's what the first speaker brought up, you know. I mean, I'm Yahshua, you know, mm -hmm. that's happily, you might feel after him, mm -hmm. you know. Okay? Now, here, this is uh, a descending plane. All right, listen, then, and, and see, so now when, we, when, when Yahshua is revealed from heaven, those that are in Yahshua now, as we speak, they will appear with him. And see, in Yahshua, he's appearing as a flame of fire, taking flaming, where's that at? Eh? Second, is that Second Thessalonians, maybe? I'm thinking. Yeah, Second Thessalonians 1 and uh, 6. Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. Mm -hmm. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahweh to recompense tribulations unto them that trouble you, 
and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh, and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, mm -hmm. who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to glorify his sons and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. All right, good enough. All right, see, now he's going to come in flaming vengeance, and we are going to appear with him in that flaming vengeance. Mm -hmm. And everybody that you knew, that you talked to about the gospel of the Lord, they're going to be right here. They're going to see you. They're going to compare you and compare them. They're going to see the nice, you know, shiny clothes you got on and compare it to the filthy rags that they got on, meaning the filthy rags of of uh, theories and concepts and opinions and Part of you know all of that see see that's going to be burned into the lake of fire in, in other words we we will cast them into the lake of fire hmm. okay and they will be consumed okay but you as a flame of fire fire can't hurt fire right okay so now here this is descending coming here everything is cast into the lake of fire the whole universe is it's, in other words, it's just telling you it's being translated, okay? It's being translated, and now here we have the renovation of the earth, right. see, into something newer, something pristine, that is to say, an incorporeal creation, a new earth state, a new heaven and a new earth state. Um, what does that have? Second Peter, third chapter, I'm, I'm thinking. <clears throat> Second Peter uh, da, 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 da. three and ten. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, mm -hmm. in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. The earth also and the works that are therein will be burnt up, shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all things shall be dissolved. What manner of person, excuse me, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conduct and righteousness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, mm -hmm. for in the heavens shall be on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and new earth, we're in dwells righteousness. All right, good enough. We look for new heavens and a new earth. Mm -hmm. See, see, because this, 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 this physical creation cannot stand. Right. You know, it it can't. It, it, it has to end. And you, as someone who is the spirit of Yahweh, is in. That is to say, you have an immortal spirit. Right. Dwelling in a mortal body, this mortal body cannot contain this immortal spirit. Mm -hmm. It can contain it for now, but as far as the journey that we're getting ready to go on here through these ages, mm -hmm. no. It's just, this is an old wine skin. It'll burn us. It just can't handle it. Flesh and blood can't handle it. Well, let's read it. Oh, yeah. First Corinthians 15th chapter. Let's, let's try that. And then maybe we can get to somewhere. 15 and uh, 20. Well, 15 and 20, to start there. But now is the Messiah risen from the dead mm -hmm. and become the first fruits of them that sleep. Mm -hmm. For since by, by man came death, mm -hmm. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Let's see now, by man, now, by man came death. See, came death, all right? Go ahead, see? And by Yahshua came his resurrection, because Yahshua picked up the man where he fell. Right. Continue reading. For as in Adam all died. All died in Adam. We all died in Adam. Read. For so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. But in the Messiah we all are made alive. Okay? Go ahead. But every man in his own order. Mm -hmm. The Messiah, the first fruits, mm -hmm. after his day that are, are, the Messiah's at his coming. Mm -hmm. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh, mm -hmm. even even 
the Father, mm -hmm. when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. All right, now, that's happening here. He's putting down all rule and power and throwing it all to the lake of fire, and he's renovating the earth. See, and we are being renovated because we are, see, we already have an immortal spirit, but right. now we're going to get an immortal glorified body to be able to contain that glorified mm -hmm. immortal spirit. See, go ahead. For we must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Go ahead. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm -hmm. For he hath put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. But when he says all things mm -hmm. are under him, it shall it is manifest that he is excluded. Now it's manifest that he is excluded. Now I'm going over here. See the point. See, look, this is the fifth age. See, look, everything that you see up here is illustrated somewhere on all these charts. Right. Here. New Earth State. Here. This is this is the illustration of the fifth age. Mm -hmm. New Earth State. This is the illustration of that. It is also an illustration to show that this is a sabbatical age. Right. The seventh dispensation. This is a sabbatical dispensation, rather. That's why the word Sabbath is up here. So we're in a sabbatical dispensation and we're in a New Earth State. This is the fifth age. And it's illustrated right here. Okay? All right, go ahead. It is manifested that he is excluded, mm -hmm. which did put all things under him. Mm -hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him. Hold on, right there. Now, when all things are subdued and put under his feet, see now, that this is the fifth age. Now remember, these, there are seven steps in all of these different plates. Right. So now, the fifth step here is the new earth step. Here's the sixth step. What is the sixth step? The sixth step, as we understand by the tabernacle pattern, the second departmental veil. Right. According to the migratory pattern, it's the river Jordan. Mm -hmm. See, what is the thing that is significant about the sixth step? One, here, the river Jordan divided. Over here, the veil rent in twain right. in the temple. That's, look here. See, that's manifested here with us. See, this torn, rent in twain. See, so the sixth step is letting you know it's a transition mm. for Elohim. In other words, it's going to be like it was here. Because right. here he is standing here alone. See, he's the creation at the first cause of it, but, he, but he's not making any, he hasn't, he hasn't come over to the, he hasn't come over to this part yet. He hasn't, he hasn't come to this part yet, but now we're going back. Because see, everything is put under here. If you remember, mm -hmm. he, we started off with him. Standing up, and the earth is under his, is under his feet. It's his footstool, right? right? Okay? Draw a line. It's got to be the same thing in principle here. All things put under his feet or mm -hmm. made his footstool. So that Elohim, we and Elohim on top of the, the, the earth, the footstool, the new heaven, the new earth, just like it is here. Mm -hmm. See, that's the sixth step here. All right? Um, put your finger there. Mm -hmm. I want to read something. Put your finger there. Get... Ezekiel 46 and 1. Ezekiel 46 and 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith Yah Yahweh, the gates of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut, mm -hmm. and the six, the six working days but the Sabbath, it shall be open. Now, six working days. It's like six ages. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six working days or six ages, it'll be shut. But on the seventh day, it will... Read, read that again. But on the Sabbath, it shall be open. But on the Sabbath, which is the seventh age, it shall be open. What do you mean? Didn't I tell you here? What, what happened at the sixth step here? Was there an opening here? Right. What happened here in the temple with the veil? Right. Did it rent in twain? Was there an opening there? Yep. So now it's the same thing here. This is the sixth step. This is an opening here. And Elohim is going through it. Because mm -hmm. he's the true high priest. It's just like on the, the high priest. Oh uh, boy, where we at? Here. The high priest on the Day of Atonement, see, he had to stop here on his third trip up, see, and he had to put on the garments of beauty and glory, he had to get coals from the altar, and he had the blood right. of the, uh, the third blood, which was the blood of the ram, 
which was for the cleansing of the sanctuary. And he had to go behind the veil. And then he had to get in front of this Ark of the Covenant and turn it around and turn it all the way around. And he would be facing east and then he would sprinkle, uh, sprinkle seven, uh, seven points, uh, seven drops of blood. He'd sprinkle seven times and then turn it back around. See, and then, and then back out on the other side, right. coming back to the altar of incense. See, making a figure eight. Right. Making a figure eight. All right? So, but here, Elohim is, is coming up in here. And he's got, and look, when he puts on the garments of beauty and glory, that represents Israel, because there were 12 stones right there, represent the 12 tribes and stuff. He's, see, look, here, the new earth state. We glorified in him are the garments of beauty and glory right. that he has to put on and go up and present us to the Father. Right. Okay? See, this is going to be open, and he's going up in it. Now go back to Corinthians, yeah, where you left off. See, that, see, that gate's going to be open. It's open for him to go up in, fully dressed, and he's going to present us into the Father, which is the seventh age or the sabbatical up here in the most holy place, because that's the seventh step. Okay, read. Let me get 27 again. All right. For he hath put all things under his feet. Uh -huh. But when he saith all things are put under him, mm -hmm. it is manifest that he is excluded, which did put all things under him. Mm -hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him that put things under him, that Yahweh may, may be all in all. So that he might be all in all. That happens when he goes up in here. This is the seventh age. Mm -hmm. And he goes up into the cloud. And see, and this is him up in here. I'm talking about Elohim. Right. And us with him. And I tell you, and, and, and in principle, just like the high priest did here, had to make a figure eight. Mm -hmm. In principle, he has to make a figure eight here. And then when he comes out right. from behind the veil, this is what he comes out looking at. See, he's come out, and this is the eighth age or the beginning of a new set of ages. He himself is the sanctum of sanctorums, or the most holy of all, or the holiest of all. And he's and, and see, he's in the midst of seven of the seven branch lampstand, which shows forth seven ages are completed. He has seven stars in his hands, showing forth seven new ages. This is the end. And look, this is a death here because he's coming out. He's, he's got to take on shape and form. So this is a death here, just like it was a death here. Right. The difference is he's nude here, which means that the purpose at the beginning is hidden in a mystery. Mm -hmm. But here he's fully clothed, so meaning that we in him at this point, now the mystery is fully revealed. Right. And that we in him will determine the next set of ages. Just like whoever was in the previous set of ages here determined what was going to be in this set right. of ages. But to us, see, in this set, this is a mystery. But here, he's fully revealed. See, and, and see, let's read that. Um, I think it's in the textbook. It's in the volume one. <coughs> Yeah, volume one, page 93. I just want to read. Uh... Yeah, 91, 90, yeah. Uh, if you want, or you want to check on it, I, I got it. I, I'll read it. Okay, good. Why don't you go check yeah, on it? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I appreciate okay. that. Okay, I'm going to read this section here. It says, uh, volume 1, page 93, and it's called, The Importance of Rightly Dividing the mm -hmm. Seven Dispensations and Ages. Time begins and ends within the realm of eternity. Therefore, we must bear in mind, remember, and know the difference between one age <clears throat> and the other. Mm -hmm. The difference between one dispensation and the other. The following definitions of an age and dispensations were taken from Webster's Dictionary. Age, a particular period of time, or a, a particular period or time of history, as distinguished from another, a historical or geological period, epoch. For example, each age is approximately 2,000 years long. Right. The Antediluvian age is a short age. 
See, it's a short age of 1,656 years. The post diluvian age is a long age of 2,377 years, while the present age must be a short age. See? All right? See, chart opposite 94. Now, it goes it has a chart. Now, the ages, they are as follows. You have the creative age here. You have the antediluvian age, the post-diluvian age, the present kingdom age of grace, the kingdom age or the kingdom in, in immortality. Then you have the perfect, the six ages, the perfect age, and the seventh age is the sabbatical, which are the ages to come. Mm -hmm. All right? Now I said the perfect. What's so perfect about the six? See, the word perfect means intact. And we read that, how everything had to be put under his feet, right. as it were. And Elohim has to go back intact because he came out intact. Mm. See? And then, and then he began to do his good. But now that's cosmogony. But his eschatology is going back into him. And he's got to be intact, going back into the holies of holies. Right. And then coming out again in the seventh age here, then coming out again in the eighth age or the beginning. Of, well, we're gonna we're gonna read in a minute. <clears throat> um, the Sabbath is the day of Yahweh, or the day before the beginning of the eighth or the beginning of another series of ages. It is necessary to mention here that Yahweh is eternal. So now here's the Sabbath or the day of Yahweh or the eighth. Which is, here's the Sabbath here. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning, the, 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 this is before the eighth set of ages here. This is the Sabbath up here. And then when he comes back out again, he's still, he's ready to go to work. He's going to begin his, his, his day of creation, another, another set of ages. Okay, and I'll finish reading this. Um, it, is, uh, it is also necessary that you do, as the Apostle Paul advised Timothy, study the scriptures, to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, and in parenthesis, the ages and dispensations, the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. Learn to correctly divide the ages and dispensations. It must be remembered that all things visible and invisible abides within the realm of eternity. Right. Okay? That's time. And look, true time, true, see look, we measure natural time by the movement of the S-U-N, mm -hmm. the sun. All right? But that's just the type of the movement of the true sun, the sun of Elohim, moving just like here. You have these hearts up here on the days of creation. See, Elohim is moving through these days of creation. He's, he's performing or manifesting in these days of creation. All right? Compare that to the seven ages. It's the same way. Elohim is moving through the seven ages. And then at the end of the ages, here, he appears here at the end of the ages, complete. See, everything is done here. Dr. Kinley said in a lecture once, I remember, he said, look, when we get to this part here, which is, which is right here, we get to this part here, see, we get, we get here, see, we get here, we'll be able to look back See, and we could ask some, some serious questions, and I know I got a few. Uh, yeah, yeah. But Dr. Kinley said that, you know, at this point you can look back and, and, and ask and understand. He, he said you can understand why Yahweh even made a creation mm. in the first place. Why Yahweh made a man. Why the purpose of Yahweh is the way it is. These are questions you'll be able to ask wow. and get answers to. Wow. See, to these things. And not only that, but to be also in the process of a new wow. set of ages. You know, that's just something wow. that is, to a finite <laughs> mind, boggling. it is, it is boggling mm -hmm. to a finite mind because we, we're so used to a starting point. Mm -hmm. I was born into this world and, and eventually I will die, mm -hmm. you know, from point A to point B, see. But Yahweh, see. There is no point A to point mm -hmm. B, see, because he is eternity sure. himself. Okay. We're about out of time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this short. But uh, but I hope that you were edified uh, by the things that you heard today, and I truly was 
which was tickled to hear from my friend who right. was in prison. And, and usually I, I'll try to answer because he can't get to the phone a lot of times, so, you know, so he wouldn't, if I'd have, if I'd have denied it, he would, he would have probably had to wait another 24 hours, but then it was good that I was able to patch him in and he could hear a little bit of class, mm -hmm. you know, plus he, he's been on it. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate his efforts. And so, um, as always, you know, if you have any subjects you want to bring up or questions you want to ask, feel free. You know, that's what we're here for. That's what we will try to do, you know, in accordance to what Dr. Kendrick set up. Okay. Uh, okay. We're almost like where we are out of time. Again, I, I hope you were edified by the things that, uh, that you heard. As always, take the time and go through this. Relax. You know, a lot of people get scared, you know, when they go, mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to do that. But it's really, the charts, the charts will teach you, see. This vision will teach you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. Right. My favorite saying in all of this, the more you engage these charts, which is the vision, the more they will engage you. And they will teach you. And you will learn. Okay. As always, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, truly, truly be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly, truly is your only hope of glory. And with those few words, hallelujah. 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 You want to get doxology first, huh? What? You want me to do the charge? No, you go ahead and do it. Uh, make the announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Rio read his announcement. It's uh, about the yeah. donating and stuff, but she's got an address and stuff. Move it a little bit. Let me just have the thing. You know, it's back up. Okay, anybody that would like to donate to our class so we can pay for this building that we're in? Um, not for us, because it's, it isn't. We don't get anything out of this except learning. So, okay, if donation, if you want to do Venmo, you can do Venmo Archetype Pattern Roof Shop at Archetype Pattern 2520. Okay, also Cash App too. Okay, cash up also. Cash up and it's lowercase, not not capitalized. Archetype. Okay, it's lowercase the same way. Archetype pattern. Or if you want to make a checkout, you can make a checkout to Archetype Pattern Workshop and send it to 11290 Ohio Avenue, apartment H. And then in Los Angeles, Cal West Los Angeles, 90025. And if you would like to just do straight over your account, a bank account, it says uh, you go by Zelle. It, and the area code is 310-625-0427. If you would like to order one of our chart books, you could order it by um, contacting me uh, either by phone or you could go through our email. It's RamirezIVR at Hotmail.com. I just want to say, you know, if anybody wants to, you go ahead. If you don't have it, just turn into our class and listen to what is said so you can learn about your Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahshua. Thank you. All right, I want to give a shout out to Valencia, out uh, back uh, east of Chicago, and uh, thanks for your help out there. She's our uh, PR person for Archetype Pattern Workshop. Uh, also, thanks to those in the East Coast, uh, those over there in Florida, uh, Ezekiel, the grandson, and also the rest of the branch schools out there, uh, overseas, okay in Mexico, and also uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Joseph Iles. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so we'll all send, uh, be dismissed uh, with the doxology, take it from Jude. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless with his presence, with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, to Yahshua the Messiah Sovereign, beyond glory, majesty, dominion, and power forever. Let's all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. Okay, so people want to know, you know, because sometimes they can't really see it. Do I do for the donations?